My name is Maya. I am a junior studying computer science at MIT, and I'm also a senior computer science instructor with Juni Learning. A fun fact about me is that in my free time, I actually love to paint. So in today's video, we're going to be doing a project I like to call Fireworks. It's kind of inspired by the 4th of July, and we'll be doing our coding in Scratch. For this project, we're basically going to be using loops and random numbers to make a fireworks show. So this project is a designed for a beginner, somebody who's pretty new to Scratch and coding in general. In Juni, it would be Scratch level one. And if you are a beginner, I would say this project is still going to be relatively easy or straightforward. So some of the things that we're going to be learning or practicing today are loops and random numbers. And some things that I'll assume you're a little bit more comfortable or familiar with are just the looks blocks and Scratch's general setup, although I will briefly go through them. So if you are new to those things, you should still be able to follow along with the project. So before I get into this anymore, why don't I walk you guys through what a finished version of this project might look like. Okay. So as you can see, we've got a whole bunch of fireworks and they keep going off all over the screen. We have them, they're all different colors and sizes and every time they appear, they're in a different location. And they also make this nice little fireworks sound every time that they go off. So we're going to be recreating this project in Scratch. Um, a couple things I want us to keep in mind before we start to code this is that you'll notice even before I press the green flag, there's a couple of different fireworks that exist. So we'll be using more than one sprite to get the show to look nice and full. You can also notice that each sprite, every time it appears, it's a different random color, a different random size, and in a different random location. It's making the same sound every time, but what it'll do is at the beginning they all disappear and then you know one will appear for a little bit, make a sound, disappear, reappear somewhere else, and that basically keeps going on forever. But they don't all start at the same time. So these are all things that we're going to try and incorporate into our version of this fireworks project. Why don't we go ahead, I'll open up a new tab, and we can start working on this together. The general order of steps that we're going to be following is first I'm going to start with just one firework. We'll make it disappear at the very beginning, we'll make it wait a little bit, and then appear in a random place with a random size and color with the sound. Once we have that working, we'll make it so that it keeps doing that over and over again forever. Then we'll add all of the other fireworks and we'll add just a couple of blocks so that they don't all start at the same time. Why don't I open up a new tab and we can get started. So you can see here that a couple of things are already set up. So I have a firework sprite that I've imported. As a reminder, if you want to upload or import your own sprite, you can click this button here that says Upload Sprite, which is what I did to get this nice firework shape. Um, I also made my own backdrop, which I did by actually just painting my own little night sky over here in the backdrops section. So I clicked on backdrops, went over here and painted my own. If you want to make your own version of this project, you can pick your own fireworks sprite that you want to use. You can also, I think in the link of the description of this video or on the Juni blog, there should be a link to a template in case you want to use the same sprite and the same background. One other thing that we have set up here is if I click on my sprite and then go to sounds, you'll notice that I have this sound here, which is like the fireworks sound. The way that I got this was I actually imported a sound. So down here, there's a little button and I can choose a sound. So I picked the symbol sound and then clicked the slower button a couple of times just to make it sound a bit more like a firework. Brief reminder of how Scratch works for those of you that are new. Over here, we can see all of our sprites, which are basically just like the little characters that we can write code for and control. Over here to the right, we see our stage, which is where the results of our code will be visible. On the left, we can see all of our blocks, which we'll use to write our code. And here in this big white space is where we'll actually put our blocks and assemble them to write the code that we want to do. So now that we've completed our overview, let's start figuring out how we'll recreate the fireworks project on our own. 
So like I said before, the very first thing we want to do is let's figure out how to make this firework disappear, wait a little bit, and then reappear. That's the very first step. So I want this whole process to start when I click the green flag. So if we go over to the events section and I click on when the green flag click, drag this block over here, any blocks I put underneath here will run when I click the green flag, which is exactly what we want. So I'll go over to the lick section and the very first thing I want this sprite to do is I want it to disappear in the beginning. So if I scroll down, I can see this block that says hide. So that means when I click the green flag, my sprite will hide, which is exactly what we want. We don't want it to stay hidden forever though. So the next block that we'll need to use is show. So now you'll notice is if I put these right next to each other, it doesn't look like anything happens. You know, we don't actually see that block disappear. And that's because these blocks will happen so quickly one after the other that we won't actually be able to see the sprite hide. So to fix that, I'll go over to the control section and I'll grab a block so that we can wait a little bit in between each of these. So I will have it wait for half a second, so 0.5 seconds before it shows again. So let's see how that looks. Great, so every time I click the flag, our firework disappears, waits a little bit, and then reappears, which is perfect. So what I'll do now is after it shows, we want our firework to make that big firework sound. So if I go over to the sound block, I will grab play sound until done. And so what that'll do now is when I click the green flag, when it reappears, it should play that nice big sound for us. So let's do that. Perfect. Nice firework sound. Finally, when it's done with that firework sound, we want it to disappear again. So we can grab the same block that we did before. We drag it over. So what will happen now when I click the green flag, it will disappear, wait a little bit, appear, play the sound, and when it's done, it will disappear again. So let me click the green flag and we can see how that looks. Perfect! That's exactly what we want. So now that we have our firework doing the whole appearing and disappearing the way that we want, let's make it so that when it appears, we have all those random things happen. So the first random thing we want to do is we don't want it to be in the same spot every time. I want every time that it appears, it can be somewhere else. So if I go over to the motion section, we can see this box that says, go to random position. What that will do is when this block runs, it'll move our sprite somewhere else random on the screen. So I want to put this block somewhere in my code so that before it shows up, it moves somewhere random. So I can stick it right before the show block. Let's see how that looks. Perfect, so it was in a different spot than it was before. And if I run that again, it'll be somewhere else. So this is exactly what we want. Now the next thing we want to do is I don't want my firework to be the same size every time. I want it to kind of be a different size or a random size every time it appears. So if I go to the looks section, we can see this block that says set size to, and right now it says 100%. So I can use this block to change the size of my sprite. So the thing is, if I just type a number here, it will set the sprite to that size when it runs. You know, and maybe every time I can go in and manually change the number. But the problem with that is that if I start to have my code make it appear over and over and over again, if I want it to be a different size every time, I would have to keep changing that number. I don't want to have to do that manually. So let's see if we can find a block so that instead of me, having to pick a different number every time, the computer can do that by itself. So if I scroll down and I go to the operator section over here, we can see that there's this block that says pick random, one to 10. So I can change the numbers here. And essentially what this will do is it will give us a random number somewhere in that range. So if I say pick random one to 10, this block will give us a random number somewhere between one and 10. So why don't I change this maybe from 50% to 200%. And so if I put this inside of this circle, 
instead of it setting the size to the same number every time, every single time this block runs, it will set the size to a different random number, which is exactly what we want. So why don't I move this block so right after it goes to a random position, it will change the size of our file. Let's see how that looks. Nice, let's see what happens. Good, so you can see every time I run it, my firework is a slightly different random size, which is perfect. Now, the last thing we want to do for this firework right here is we want to make it so that the color is also changing. So why don't I go back to the look section and we can see this block here that says set color effect. So if I put a different number in here, it will change the color of our sprite, which is exactly what we want. But just like before with the set size block, I don't want the color to just be something I have to manually change. I want my computer to randomly pick a number every time. So just like before, we can go down to the operators section and I can use this pick random one to 10 block. So I'm gonna change this number so it will give me a random number between zero and 300. And instead of having the set color effect to zero, I can set the color effect to some random number. What we can do now is if I put this right after I set my size, every time I hit the green flag, we should see our firework be some random color, which is exactly what we want. Let's see how this looks. Nice, so that time it was green. I'll run it again. That time it was red. Let's try it one more time. Perfect, and that time it was yellow. So now that we have this one firework doing exactly what we want, all we have to do is make it so that once I click the green flag, it will keep doing this over and over and over again. So if we go over to the control section, we can see this special block that says forever. So this block is an example of something that we call a loop. A loop is a piece of code that basically repeats whatever's inside of it over and over and over until you tell it to stop. So a forever block is special because whatever we put inside of it, it will basically keep going forever. The only time it stops is when we force the game to stop. So like in this example, maybe it'll be when I press that red stop button. So this is exactly what we want, right? We want our fireworks show to keep going forever. So if I go ahead and grab this box, we just have to decide which box we want to go inside of it. So essentially this whole pattern here, right? Where we wait a little bit, we appear randomly, and play our sound and we disappear. That's what we want to keep. This hide block at the top, we don't want to include because that's just at the very beginning, right? We don't want our fireworks to be showing when the show starts. So I can go ahead and put this block around everything except for that first hide block. So I'm going to go ahead and click the green flag. Let's see how it looks. Perfect, so I'm not clicking anything and the fireworks are still exploding over and over and over again, basically forever until I click the stop button. So now that we have one firework doing what we want, all we have to do is replicate this for a bunch of sprites. So we can do that really easily. If I go over to the sprite and I right click, if I'm on a PC or if you're on a Mac, you can hold down the control key and then click. And here we see this button that says duplicate. So if I click that, I can have another sprite with the exact same code. So let's see what happens now when I press my go flag. Nice. So you can see they're both doing the same thing. Like they're both doing the code that we told them to, but they're doing it at exactly the same time, which I don't want. I want my second firework to start a little bit later. So why don't I go ahead and grab my wait block? So before it starts this forever process, let's make it wait a little bit. That way it'll start a little bit later than our other firework and they won't be exploding at the same time. So I'll make this wait 0.4 seconds, which is a little bit less than half. Right after I hide, I'll tell it to wait before it starts doing the process forever. Let's see if that looks any better. Great. So now what we'll do is let's add some more fireworks. I'm going to duplicate this and we'll just change the offset or how much they wait before they start 
so that they all start at slightly different times. Let's make that one wait 0.8 seconds. Let's make this one wait 1.2 seconds. And this one can be 0.4 seconds. Let's see how that looks. I'm going to change the last offset so it's just a little bit later and let's try that one more time. Perfect, I think that looks great. So that's pretty much our fireworks project. You know, we used loops, right, that forever block and random numbers so that we can have fireworks show where not all of the fireworks look the same and unlike the one on 4th of July it can actually continue forever. So I hope that you guys learned something today. If you want to see more videos about how to do coding projects like this one or maybe ones that are slightly different levels you can check out the Juni channel or subscribe if you want to keep getting new videos as we make them and if you're interested to see more of a written walkthrough if that's a little bit more towards the way that you learn you can always check out the Juni blog where we'll have posts walking you through how you might do these projects on your own so again i hope you learned something and most of all i hope you enjoyed this bye bye Thanks so much for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe to June Learning for weekly updates on math and coding tutorials. And if you want to keep watching more videos, you can do that right here. Also, if you want to keep learning from instructors like me, don't forget to check out junilearning.com for private and group courses that we have to offer. Thanks so much for joining us and we hope to see you next time.